I see a frequent sticking point cropping up with instrument students and pilots taking our ground school courses. It's when to descend on an instrument approach when told to maintain a certain altitude until established on the approach. What exactly does it mean to be established on an instrument approach? First, consider this scenario. We're assigned the ILS approach into runway 17 at Asheville, North Carolina. This approach has two initial approach fixes, one at the Snowbird VOR and another at the Keens NDB, which also serves as the locator outer marker, defining the final approach fix. But for this scenario, let's say we're getting radar vectors to final, starting off at 7,000 feet. We're on a right base leg for the final approach course. We get our approach clearance, which sounds like this. Turn right, heading 140, maintain 7,000 until established on the localizer, cleared ILS runway 17 approach. The first crossing altitude on the approach course is 5,000 feet at Wugag, 2,000 feet below our current altitude, so we'd love to start our descent to get down there. However, our timing is controlled by 91175I, which states in part that when operating on an unpublished route like we are, we need to maintain the last altitude assigned until established on a segment of the published approach. So we stay at 7,000 until established. But what does it mean to be established on an approach? Surprisingly, the FAA gives no explicit definition of the term established in either the FAR or the AIM. The pilot controller glossary says that established means to be stable or fixed at an altitude or on a course, route, etc. Using the word stable to define the word established, which both have the same root, is a bit of a circular definition. Besides, the concept of stability is a bit subjective. Are we established on this approach as soon as the needle starts coming in, when we start our turn inbound, or only when the needle is centered and we're no longer turning? Remember, we need to lose 2,000 feet before Wugak, so we don't want to wait too long to descend if we can help it. The definition is fuzzy. Can we do better than this? Many instrument students will be familiar with the requirement that crops up on a lot of tasks in the instrument ACS, which says that a stabilized final approach will have no more than a three-quarter scale deflection. This is closer to a well-defined definition of being established, but only really applies to the check rider on an IPC. It doesn't get at the idea of being established as described in the regs we've looked at. We'll need to look beyond U.S. borders for a hard definition. The ICAO Procedures for Air Navigation Services, which defines procedures for international standards, mentions that an aircraft is considered established when it's within half full-scale deflection on an ILS or within plus or minus 5 degrees of the required bearing for the NDB. So for our ILS approach, the one-half scale deflection would put us here, two and a half dots deflected. Let's do a bit of IFR math here. Usually on a VOR, a full-scale deflection is equivalent to 10 degrees. But with a localizer being four times more sensitive, full-scale here is just 2.5 degrees, and our half-scale puts us one and a quarter degree off. Wugag is at 10 DME. Where we're intercepting is about four miles outside of Wugag, so we're about 14 miles from the localizer. The rule of 60 says that when we're 60 miles out, each degree of deflection is one mile off course. But at only 14 miles out, we'd be just 0.3 miles from the localizer centerline, or about 1,750 feet. In case you're curious, the laterally protected airspace on a localizer this far out from the threshold is almost 10,000 feet. So what, you say? This means that if you want to give yourself a bit more time in the descent, feel free to consider yourself established when that needle first jumps alive rather than when it gets to half scale. This will give us plenty of time to get to 5,000 feet prior to reaching our next step-down fix at Wugag. You won't always hear the phrase until established from the controller. They're only required to give you an altitude to maintain before intercepting the course when you're on an unpublished route, like our radar vector was. We could have just as easily have been cleared for the approach from Sugarloaf Mountain, following the feeder route at 6,600 feet into the Keens NDB, flying outbound, and then executing the procedure turn. ATC would just tell us we're cleared for the approach without mentioning an altitude to maintain until established. That doesn't mean we stop paying attention to when we actually get established. That subsection of 91175 still applies. We have to make our descents only when established. So we'll get to the NDB and fly outbound, descending when established on the outbound course to 5,600, the procedure turn altitude. We'll execute the procedure turn, staying at 5,600 until established on the localizer. We'll use full deflection, but remember the ACS gives a guideline of three-quarter scale and a KO has a half scale. 
Also keep in mind that the requirement to wait until established applies only to the altitude you have to maintain. There's nothing stopping us from starting a turn to intercept the localizer before being truly established. Though you wouldn't want to start that turn at least until the needle has come alive, otherwise you wouldn't really be following any guidance in doing so. One last thing to consider. When we're talking about RNAV or RNP approaches like with the GPS, the aim does in fact have a specific definition of being established. It says that we're considered established when we're within the required accuracy of the segment being flown. Now in a typical RNAV GPS approach, the required accuracy is one nautical mile. So we'd be considered established when we're one mile from the center line. Useful to know, but not applicable to the ILS approach we highlighted in this video. Don't forget to check out IFR Ground School at flight-insight.com. We've got the link to all our courses here in the description, including our all access bundle, which gets you all seven of the Flight Insight courses, including all future offerings we're working on, saving you over 50%. Check it out today.